Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for Alaska Weather on this 11th day of September 2016. We've got uh, a winter storm watch out for the Brooks Range for tomorrow due to uh, all the moisture coming into the southwest here, part of the state spreading eastward. That's also going to be shooting off to the north and uh, looking for. Uh, four to seven inches of snow to fall across the area there tomorrow, uh, that above 3,000 feet, and that'll last into uh, Tuesday as well, where another several inches are possible. And then there's a high wind warning out here for the Alaska Range, the passes particularly, uh, for south winds, south to southeast winds, gusting uh, in excess of 70 miles per hour, and that's uh, west of the tow cutoff and even extends back here uh, to the west. And moving on to satellite imagery yesterday, uh, not bad here, over much in the interior, clouds and showers leaving the southeast coast, very weak trough or front left over on the north slope there, and then watching a big storm developing with a pretty good cloud shield here, cirrus spreading onto the southwest coast during the afternoon, main low center right about there, the front just uh, crossing the eastern Aleutians. Uh, bring some pretty good wind and rain into that area in excess of a couple inches. Then we'll see today that system has pushed eastward here to uh, right along the coast now during the afternoon hours and the front uh, coming across Bristol Bay. Clouds and moisture streaming northward with the precipitation back down in this area southward spreading northeastward and off to the east and right down across Kodiak Island moderate amounts of rain falling there today. Otherwise, a nice day here over the southeast coast after the low clouds and fog dissipated, some cirrus spreading into the uh, northern areas there. And not a lot going on up here to the north over the north slope Arctic coastal areas. Just uh, some clouds up there and then gusty north winds from St. Lawrence Island coming down across the Pribloffs. Uh, 30 gusting 45 miles per hour there at St. Paul and St. George with rain and fog and those winds coming down uh, to about Nikolsky back over to Atka at about the same speeds there. We've got a low here south of uh, the Alaska Peninsula, that keeping some rain going over Cold Bay where they had southeast winds uh, 35 to 45 miles per hour at times today. Otherwise, this uh, front roughly in this position this afternoon, still west of Kodiak Island and uh, pretty good winds and rain. Again, the gusty winds here, even over toward the uh, Western Alaska Range and areas on down toward Eastern Bristol Bay, seeing 35, 40, 50 mile per hour wind gusts, some cases even higher than that. Less wind back up to the north there with less gradient. And then these northeasterly winds picking up from St. Lawrence Island on down the back side of that system. High cirrus spreading up and across the Brooks Range this afternoon. And again, heading over into the southeast coast. And for tonight, again, that high wind warning continues. This front edging its way eastward. Rain heavy at times or heavy rain, especially on the southern coast of the Kanab Peninsula, western Prince William Sound, all the way across uh, to the uh, Cordova area and to a lesser extent in the Copper River Basin. It's gonna be pretty windy there. You can see winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour there. And then again, up to 70 or better through the passes of the Alaska Range. But as this front pushes eastward, and this position roughly at about uh, 3, 4 a.m. Monday morning, winds will begin to come down here over Cook Inlet, uh, back to the west a little bit, and the rain tapering off to showers back down toward Kodiak Island, but shifting northward there, and approaching the Brooks Range. So a pretty wet, windy night uh, for the Seward Peninsula, 
Northwest Valley areas, Kotzebue Sound, uh, eastward here, right into the Yukon, a little less wind over in this area, then uh, back to the western advance of that occluded front. Fair skies, light winds, variable clouds with the southeast coast, uh, still under high pressure there. And then a pretty uh, energetic trough coming eastward here with that low center just off the uh, northwest or off the uh, coast of the Yukon Delta. So pretty good uh, shot, another shot of uh, rain and showers coming with that in advance of that system. Again, into the Cuscombe Valley and southward there across Bristol Bay to the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, diminishing winds now here for the eastern Aleutians and the Pribilofs winds really lightening up, precipitation ending later tonight. And then the next front bringing some uh, wind and rain, gale force winds into the western Aleutians with uh, rain spreading eastward. Tomorrow should make its way over to about uh, ADAC there with those uh, winds associated with it. Now we've got the main low here right over eastern Norton Sound in that area. So good northeast winds turning northwest. Again, uh, 30 to 50 miles per hour. Gale warnings through the Bering Strait here down across Nunavak Island out for tomorrow. Pretty windy up there along the northwest coast as well. Uh, and then that front right along the Brooks Range. Uh, precipitation the entire day again above 2,500 to 3,000 feet that's going to fall in the form of snow and possible four to seven inches. And this uh, trough here advances eastward so uh, rain showers moderate to heavy at times uh, pushing up to the Alaska Range northern Cuscombe Valley and on down into northeast Bristol Bay. Rain, uh, occasional rain, still kind of breezy here across south central Alaska. Not so heavy for the Prince William Sound area to Cordova. The heaviest rain now shifting over to Yakutat and starting to slip on into the northern southeast coast. And uh, just some scattered showers up over the Tanana Valley into the Yukon. And that area, higher pressure building in over the Bering Sea, the eastern Bering Sea here. So a pretty nice day for the eastern Aleutians. Even the Alaska Peninsula kind of drying out there. Maybe a few breaks in the, or see some sun breaks out there tomorrow afternoon. And then that next front, as I mentioned, pushing eastward, which on Tuesday will continue to push to the eastern Aleutians uh, with gusty southeast winds, rain, and fog there. Staying south of the Pribilofs, though, and then that low center right over the Aleutians. Uh, so the strongest winds will either be down to the south or up to the north. Lighter winds right through this area up to the front itself. And uh, just uh, fair skies here. Cloudy, kind of breezy over the northern Bering Sea, but the wind's coming down considerably here for the southwest coast, back up into the Bering Strait, and uh, even along the Arctic coast, not too bad there, just some fog and low clouds, temperatures in the 30s. And for the uh, southeast coast for today, uh, up into the mid-60s over the southern panhandle, some locations, back to about 61 at Sitka, Cordova, and, uh, or not Cordova, Juneau. Cordova had 53, Yakutat 59. Uh, 40s to lower 50s there in the Copper River Basin, 58 Anchorage, Homer up to 62 with a 54 at Seward. Up to the north, uh, well, the Susitna Valley there with about a third of an inch of rain falling across the area had 48 at Talkeetna. 50s for the Tanana Valley, 40s back to the west there, 40 degrees at Umiat Airfield, 57 Fort Yukon. Arctic coast, uh, mid 30s on the east side, cooler northwest breezes here kept uh, Barrow, Atchison, and Wainwright below freezing the entire afternoon, then warming back up into the upper 40s, the lower 50s there across the northwest areas at 50 at uh, Kotzebue. Same temperature recorded at Nome this afternoon with uh, lower 50s here, lower to mid 50s there across the southwest interior. Out to the west, uh, lower 50s for the Perblofs and lower 50s here for the central and eastern Aleutians, warming up a little bit there at Unalaska. Upper 50s warmed into the uh, lower to mid 60s here over northeast Bristol Bay. And for the lows tonight, uh, 20s here across the north slope in the Arctic coast, 30s to 40s, mid 40s through the central interior, on out into Bristol Bay where they'll remain in the 50s, mid 50s down across the Alaska Peninsula, upper 40s to uh, lower to mid 50s here for south central Alaska, mostly in the 40s to lower 50s for the southeast coast. And for the highs tomorrow, uh, 60s showing up here, lower to mid across uh, Cook Inlet down to Kodiak Island, right around 60 for Bristol Bay. Mid to upper 50s, the Panhandle, same thing up in the interior, north of the Brooks Range, uh, temperatures all in the 30s. For flying weather, uh, that frontal boundary and the moisture slipping northward, look for that IFR to follow it right along there, right up to the Brooks Range area, and then lingering back here to the southwest, and also uh, 
up along the North Gulf Coast from roughly Yakutat back into Prince William Sound, becoming marginal VFR over southern Alaska. And for tomorrow afternoon, stays pretty uh, IFR type weather there from Prince William Sound that now working into the northern southeast coast, but staying VFR for the southern areas, VFR along and north of the Alaska Range and also areas of the Copper River Basin with a lot of marginal conditions here over western interior Alaska. IFR now there over the northeast interior right up to about the crest of the Brooks Range and also from St. Lawrence Island northward through the Strait and more IFR with the next system spreading eastward into the Bering. And for passes, Anatovic, IFR, both approaches, same forecast for Adigan. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR tomorrow. Rainy looks marginal as well. Windy marginal, Isabel, same forecast. Mentasta, though, should be in the VFR zone. And Tanita, occasional marginal VFR. All Portage will stay IFR. Chilkoot and White, marginal to start with, but coming down to IFR throughout the day. And the freezing levels here, south to north flow, head of the front, pulling warm air late tonight, early tomorrow morning, 12,000 feet here, right up to the eastern Gulf Coast and across the Panhandle. Quite a gradient right through here, there at the surface, north of the Brooks Range out to the Arctic Coast. Then about four to six to seven, eight to 10,000 feet here, down across the Bering Sea. And for icing, uh, above about 5,000 feet here in the west, and then that's sloping up to about 9,000 feet of the light to isolated moderate rime varieties there. Again, slipping into the northern southeast coast. Another area here with the moisture uh, up to the north, or above about 3,000 feet, and icing coming into the western Aleutians. Taking a look at the jet stream. We've got a pretty good trough here coming in. That's shoving the ridge off to the east, also that southwest jet also pushing off to the east, uh, so it won't be any prolonged periods of heavy rain, that front kind of moving along uh, nicely there instead of stalling. And at 9,000 feet, pretty good wind, southwest 35 to 50 knots there right into the uh, northeast coast, up to 40 knots there cutting across the 40 mile country, eastern Tanana Valley, and uh, lighter through the interior, northeast 30 to 40 there coming around the northwest quadrant of that system, swinging back around up to 45 knots there along the southwest coast and more strong winds, 35 to 50 knots there coming into the western Aleutians. 3,000 feet, about the same pattern out there, 25 to 50 knot winds. With that next uh, gale force low out there, this low uh, up over eastern Norton Sound, again southwest 25 to 30 knots. Even stronger here, again, in advance of the front, 50 knot winds out of the southwest, right into the northern Panhandle, Yakutat area, and then markedly lighter down over the southeast coast. Taking a look at turbulence. Of course, a lot of moderate chop here, northern Pan and along the North Gulf Coast, definitely across all of the southeast interior, back into northern Cook Inlet, uh, Palmer, Tanana Valley, Talkeetna Mountains, up to the Alaska Range there, with light to isolate moderate chop coming north of Eagle. And then those northeast winds here, keeping it pretty bumpy there from about Wainwright, southwestward to Kivalina, into the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, northwest winds, occasional moderate chop there from about Amonic there across the Cusquam Delta, into the Kilbrook Mountains, and uh, light to isolate moderate chop there for Kodiak with less wind, and then with those increasing winds, we've got another area of uh, moderate turbulence there for the west central Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. We always knew the site was there, but we thought it was gone due to erosion. My grandfather would tell about the uh, bow and arrow wars, about two kids, you know, playing with darts, and one eye was poked, so the other kid's father came and did the same thing. So from that, it became a full-blown war. To see this excavation bring that story alive is one of the most fascinating things I've seen. I mean, the stories we've heard and the evidence they're pulling out from Lunasa, it's no longer a legend, it's becoming a fact. My name is Rick Connect, and I'm principal investigator of the project. 
We have 11 PhDs. We use a lot of student volunteers. We work with professional conservators to make it all happen. We've got uh, Dr. Paul Ledger, who's working on the history of climate here. Dr. Veronique Forbes, who's an archaeoentomologist who studies insects. Uh, Dr. P.T. Ashlock, who's also a professional archaeologist from Southeast uh, Alaska. Uh, Dr. Madonna Moss is from the University of Oregon, who specializes in faunal analysis. There are mussel shells throughout this site. Here's another bigger piece. And we, and we don't know where they're coming from. The Nunalik site uh, was originally um, a village. Uh, elders tell us that this site extended out about 200 feet. Since 2009, we've lost more than 30 feet on that piece of shoreline. And uh, our 2009 and 2010 excavation blocks are completely gone already. It's very much a race against time. But this particular structure with a covered boardwalk running down the middle of it was an adaptation to the bow and arrow wars. That was a period of intense conflict between different native villages here in the YK Delta. And uh, no one knew exactly when it had happened other than it happened before the Russians arrived. This collective communal house was burned down by attackers from another village up to Kuskokwim. We think it happened about 1640 based on carbon dates of the charred grass and so on on the floor. We've been excavating Nunasak for about six years now. I um, sent Rick a few pictures of artifacts I had from the locals. He came right over. He didn't even unpack. He went down the beach and they started walking and they started finding artifacts. Those first group was a tough bunch. There's these three students and a professor that come down and start looking for artifacts. Wind, rain, shine, they do it. My mind was saying, man, these guys are crazy. But they're trying to beat the erosions. We get bugs, we get weather, we get wind, we get rain. Ouch, there's one now. Um, and so they're pretty challenging conditions. We put in as many hours as we physically can. 12 to 14 hours a day, six days a week, just so we can get to it in time. Pizza! Give me pizza! <laughs> Rick's just great. He's, he doesn't stop. He, he's a perfect person for this site. I wouldn't have no one else run this site except him. Well, I first came to Alaska to work as a graduate student in 1983, and luckily it was a preserved uh, site much like this one in Kodiak. And that one was also eroding, and we worked hard to get a sample from that, but at the same time, our assumption was there, there were gonna be more sites like that, and the whole thing washed out. There wasn't even a rock, a firecrack rock left behind. That was shocking. And we ended up only getting a 10% sample at best, and that's not gonna happen again. We're getting things that normally you just see in museum collections. We're, we've got arrows with the feathers still lashed to them. Grass rope that was used to make uh, dog harnesses. That kind of preservation. There's a piece of hair right here. I found that in my screen. PT found a ridiculously large amount of hair and Bridget found another huge clump of hair today. It seems like when they cut their hair, they just let it fall wherever it wanted to, so. There's the lamp. <laughs> the hair is kind of sticking out right there. It's all over the place, actually. There's been way hairier lamps, too. It's like, oh, you find hair, and you're like, oh, this is like a hair sample, and then you dig a little more, and then it's actually a lamp. <laughs> Bridget found an earring in the screen. Yeah, that's definitely fun. Yeah. And then I would have a, it goes up to about there, I think. So I don't know how they actually wore them, like how it fit kinda, in. Yeah, they kind of look like clip-ons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've heard that we're up to around 30,000 museum quality pieces, which will be coming back to Queen Hawk in 2017. We're hoping to get a cultural center built here, um, and then I'm hoping all the artifacts will remain in the village.
we estimate the site might have five to ten years left maximum. It could be lost in one big winter storm. It's like a museum's on fire or a library and you have to rush in and save as many books and pieces of art as you can. And we're seeing things that um, people remember from their childhoods. Elders uh, have a chance to reacquaint themselves and their children with tangible remains of their heritage. Yeah, this project's been great. I'm just honored to be part of it, a small part of it. With the front approaching from the west here, uh, small craft and gale warnings are out for the north coast, 30 to 35 knots with 11 to 13 foot seas. And then winds become much lighter, more southwesterly down to the south. Light variable winds here over the southern inside waters, but then south increasing 25 knots uh, or south southeast for Stevens Passage and gales for Northern Lynn Canal. And then for uh, Tuesday, those uh, come down a little bit there. Still uh, enough gradient there with lower pressure in the Yukon to keep 30 knot winds going for Northern Lynn Canal, 20 knot Stevens Passage, Southeast 20 for Clarence Strait. And now pretty uh, general wind pattern all along the coast, all Southwest, all 20 knots and seas 11 to 12 feet. Prince William Sound, small craft advisories tomorrow. Uh, gales tonight until the front pushes through tomorrow morning. And then south 25, same thing for northern Cook Inlet, southwesterlies or south to southwest, all the way down to Kamishak Bay, southwest 20, Shelikoff Strait, and then uh, small craft advisories here east side of Kodiak Island for the Barrens and into the North Gulf Coast. Then the outlook for Tuesday, light variable winds, Prince William Sound on Tuesday with the uh, seas down to two feet, lighter winds, northern Cook Inlet, still small craft advisories in the southern inlet there south of the Forelands. With seas up to eight feet, west winds, 30 knots, coming through Kamishak Bay, nine foot seas, but uh, Shelikoff Strait down to 15 knots. Same thing here on the east side of Kodiak Island, west winds, 15 knots, and then back into the small craft advisories here for the Barren Islands, all along the North Gulf Coast, uh, seas running at about 10 feet. And for Bristol Bay, west at 25 tomorrow, seas uh, six feet or so. Northwest 20 back along the Alaska Peninsula, turning westerly on the south side. And small craft advisory southwesterlies blowing in toward Sitkanak. And then for uh, Tuesday, much lighter winds now here, just uh, variable to west for uh, Bristol Bay and also southwest of Kodiak Island, but from Castle Cape on out to Cape Sarachev. In fact, across the peninsula, Altogether there, southeast uh, 25 with 11 foot seas. And then for uh, the eastern Aleutians tomorrow, kind of a uh, north to northwest becoming lighter and more variable there. And then picking up as that next front uh, pushes eastward, we've got gales coming into the central Aleutians there, extending all the way back out to the west uh, at about uh, 35 knots with 7 to 16 foot seas. And then for Tuesday, Front pushes eastward and the winds become north and northwest at about 25 knots here, uh, even lighter back to the west. And then uh, south to southeast, Adak and Atka, small craft advisories there. And now the gales, uh, 35 to 40 knot winds pushing in toward the eastern Aleutians. Seas there running anywhere from 9 to 13 feet. And up along the southwest coast, uh, gales from Nunavak Island northward there and then about 30 knots for uh, St. Lawrence Island, northwest 20 St. Matthew Island and even lighter to the west of Perbolofs tomorrow, northwest 15 with five foot seas and the outlook for Tuesday uh, changing the wind direction there east coming up to 30 knots for both St. Paul and St. George, those seas building to 10 feet, uh, same wind pattern right up to St. Matthew Island and now northeast gales here north of Nunavak Island at 35 knots, 10 foot seas East 15 there, west of Cusquam Bay. St. Lawrence Island uh, still northerly at 25 with 10 foot seas. And for the eastern Arctic coast tomorrow, east northeast, 25 knots, six foot seas, lighter on the central coast. Then back into small craft advisories, a pretty stiff northeast breeze there at 30 knots. And those become gales from Cape Beaufort to Cape Thompson 
and then take five knots of that off heading down to the Bering Strait. For Tuesday, uh, north 30 knots from Boils on up to uh, Cape Thompson. Small craft advisories here for the western Arctic coast. Still northeast 20, lot, not a lot of change in the winds here for the central coast, even on the east side there. A couple of days with small craft advisories out of the east northeast and those seas for Tuesday running right around seven feet. And for tonight, again, that uh, strong frontal system pushing eastward here across south central Alaska. High wind warning out tonight, uh, Anchorage higher elevations, uh, gusts uh, above uh, 60 to 70 miles per hour. Of course, stronger the higher you are. And heavy rain pushing eastward as well into Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula spreading over Cordova and northward. Pretty gusty winds through the Copper River Basin. High wind warnings out for the uh, eastern Alaska Range, actually the central Alaska Range, east of the, or west of the toe cutoff. Again, looking gusts uh, 70 miles per hour plus uh, for tonight into early tomorrow and wind and rain pushing up to the Brooks Range and a strong trough here keeping uh, numerous showers, rain along the southwest coast, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. That pushes eastward tomorrow, as does the front, so the high wind warnings should end tomorrow and uh, rain becomes lighter but doesn't end along the North Gulf Coast and Prince William Sound and pushes in across the northern Panhandle. Uh, winter weather watch for four to seven inches of snow for the Brooks Range above 3,000 feet. Gusty northwest winds wrapping back in around this uh, system with uh, showers, lighter winds, fairer skies, the next system, gale force winds and rain pushing into the eastern Aleutians on Tuesday. Rain persists here over the north central interior to the Burks Range, and that front weakens and pushes a band of rain into the southern panel during the afternoon. Look for drier conditions here over southern Alaska, with maybe some sunshine, especially Kodiak Island. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.